In accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, we are conducting this meeting in a hybrid model, both virtually and in person. The Public Works Commission is conducting this meeting on January 10th, 2023 at 4 p.m. Eastern time on the Zoom platform and in person in accordance with the town's policy directors and guidelines issued on April 1st, 2020 and amended on May 7th. I ask that all Public Works Commissioners, town staff, and presenters activate their video and mute their microphone unless they have something to say or are participating in committee dialogue. For members of the public, when I open the meeting to public comment, in order to be recognized, please use the raise hand option in Zoom or the star nine by phone. If you are recognized, please state your name and address. This meeting is being recorded and will be available for later viewing on the town's website. So I'll call this meeting to order and I'll do a roll call of the commissioners that are present. James Terry. Present. Sven Weber. Present. David DeLong. Present. Jeff Fosser. Present. Andrea Solomon. Present. Okay, so um, the next item is to review and approve the, mid in, the minutes and I, there were some changes that Yes, I, I had suggested a couple minor uh, administrative changes in the, the first sentence that just be clear that everybody was in attendance. Um, and also there was a typo that got corrected. So with those changes, I move that we approve the minutes of uh -oh, oh, December, December 13th, 13th 2023. Thank Se you. Second. Okay. And I'll do a roll call. So James Terry. Aye. Ben Weber. Aye. David DeLong. Aye. Jeff Fosser. Aye. Andrea Solomon. Aye. All right. Unanimous, unanimously approved. <clears throat> okay. So we'll go on to review the calendar. Um, hey, uh, this is an opportunity just to highlight anything that's sort of, you know, uh, a particular interest. I will say at this point, we are scheduled for again the second wednesday of every month that's uh february 14th um we may have a you know we're gonna have a conversation a little about storm water um later and i just reserve the right to say we may want to have a conversation about is that the right meeting um the right context but you know we might revisit for the 14th needs to be modified but you know i think it's we, we can get into the stormwater discussion first Unless we are otherwise, we'll continue to, you know. When you say modified, do you lengthen? We, we're thinking of maybe combining a public works commission meeting, maybe to a evening to dovetail with stormwater or not. And that's okay. where I just want to have that discussion okay. a bit more. Do you know already when the hearings um, are for the town meeting? Enterprise uh, hearings are at the very end. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I, I, think I, didn't, of, I had that in the last packet. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's it's um it was in our last month's package. Yeah. Yeah. We were looking at a Feb. It's the end of February or March. So we were hoping to do something in February. Um, before outside the hearing, the, yeah. you know, before the hearing, uh, just with the understanding that hearings are pretty brief and succinct, and you have a kind of limited period of time. And with stormwater, we know there's more to it. And we thought it might warrant, and it was based on the recommendation from last time around that we would do something different, not just depend on the hearing to be the way we communicate. And um, budget stuff, will this be in the finance committee hearing? Yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, just to recall, there is the, the town manager will present the general fund uh, budget and then we have the enterprise budgets, you know, or a different uh, yeah. hearing uh, later. The enterprise budgets, we are still developing the o &M. So those haven't been even submitted to the town manager's office yet. Yeah, I think as we just should, I don't know, make sure that uh, they, a couple of the commissioners might be in the different hearings. Yeah. Well, I think There's a can... lot of kind of um, discussions in the community about Taxes, fees, cost. Mm -hmm. um, that the okay. so, so let's put there that might on be the a agenda. lot of questions. Yeah. So the next scheduled meeting, we'll make sure we include. You know, right now we have a roads program, but we'll also talk about yeah, yeah. town meeting and hearings. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that will be before any of them have happened. Yeah. 
Were you thinking of having the meeting on the 14th in the evening? It's, um, we're trying to be strategic as far as when to get an audience. And, you know, the interest was to try and make sure people are aware of the stormwater um, enterprise. Right. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. Um, in fact, we can have this discussion now because it is a, a scheduled coordination issue. Yeah. And, and maybe we can just talk. Um, wanted to throw out the, the fact that What's important is we did have what I thought was a very uh, um, good public outreach, you know, with the, a forum for water resources at the Harvey Wheeler. It was well attended. More importantly, some very good questions were were raised, and I think you know the the program for stormwater was also put in context with drinking water and wastewater as well. It was recorded. And what's nice is, you know, we have that available and we can direct people who are interested in sort of a primer on stormwater as well as the others. Um, I wanted to, you know, propose and, and, you know, wondering, it's hard to get people's attention unless they are sort of focused. And where we tried this forum and it was good because we drew attention for wastewater and drinking water, but also the stormwater, I would like to propose that the next step that we do is not just have another you know, public forum because we did that and we can direct people, but maybe have staff and or commissioner or commissioners attend uh, other um, uh, um, uh, meetings, you know, um, go to a regularly scheduled planning board meeting, go to an NRC meeting, go to um, the sustainability or climate action committee, and just go talk to them at their convenience. It's another venue, different audience. And really, I think the goal of any article like we're proposing is to get support and awareness. And these different boards and committees may have a different interest or focus, but I think what's important with stormwater is we need to identify what we're doing and why. And it's part of the explanation, but each one of those entities have an interest and stormwater and they can at least we can hear from their voice they can ask questions and again as people ask i'm going to volunteer we're more than willing staff is more than willing to talk to really engaged or interested people come on in and talk to us but we'd also like to say and if you're interested at your convenience you can go to these meetings and that's the the beauty of these pre-recorded or these um these meetings that we record here Watch those. If you have questions, come in and talk to us about specifics. So that was sort of an approach, at least, to try and get the word to targeted audience that we think have an interest. And ultimately, at town meeting, you want to look at the what are other boards and committees peripherally involved? Where do they come in? Have they, you know, have they taken a position? And it's always helpful to. Are we going to ask them to take a position because they will only probably take a position if we ask them to. Yes, I think that would be yeah. you know the mechanics of this outreach, and then you know because we have a short, the time's getting shorter. Yes. Yeah. Um, Jim, you have seen this happen many, many times before. What is the best? What do you find the best way to outreach is or to get people to know about this before they're voting on it at town meeting? I mean, it's it's. I think in this case it's difficult because it is new. It is completely different. It's not something that the town has talked about before. At least citizens haven't talked about it. Maybe staff has talked about it. But from from my perspective, I, I'm concerned. I've watched a couple of the select board meetings, and when they went through the warrant and what the you know the order of articles and things like that, it's clear to me that they're concerned that they don't know enough about it. So they don't think many citizens know much about it. Why is this being brought forward? Mm -hmm. And so I, I think I, I had reached out to Alan and to Andrea and said, is there something that we should do before the enterprise hearing where they'll have that discussion? Um, I think that the opportunity to go to other committees is probably a good one. Uh, Alan probably mentioned the three that make make the most sense that, that would have other than the public works that we would have uh, concerns about storm waters. And let me volunteer the select board as well, for instance, right? To, sure. to attend their meeting to you know speak to the issue. So I think we're just trying to 
it's it's hard to get attendance where I think we did well with that forum because it was broader. This is going to be more specific, but we provided good information. Um, so it's even uh, using news and notice, you know, different tools yeah. that we don't, we didn't used to have. And that's where the recording of these meetings, yes. I think is really important. So, so Alan, can we put on, I mean, is there anything on the Pub Public Works website right now that talks about stormwater? There, yes, we have, data? we do have information. Uh, Steve uh, Dukeman, you know, you can maybe speak to a little bit about specifically, but not just to the the forum, but on stormwater but, but generally. But that's okay. If it yeah. has a link to that forum, yeah, and it has a link to last month's meeting because when the consultant was here, that's right. So that's right. Those would those would be educational Primers. opportunities. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, so then we need to talk it up. Okay. Yes. Um, more articles on the Concord Bridge is always super helpful because yeah. a lot of people read that. Right. I mean, I feel like that is the main source of of uh, information for people. Uh, I'm surprised at how many people don't know that there's a town website and that there are links to meetings yeah. like this. Yeah. I try to tell everyone all the time, but so many people sure. don't know. Um, but you, you had something? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the, we have websites uh, um, for all of our projects. And so some have been one of those and we talk about the regulations all there, but I, I don't, I think they'll put in the link to the the public to meeting. the forum and yeah. to last month's meeting would would be good because you know you might even say starting at minute whatever you know mm -hmm. thirty we 30, can cut that minutes. even you know maybe yeah. just trim okay. it so when you go you go to that particular section yeah you know, right. we can okay. do that the other thing that we will have and again this is you know, we're we're sort of responding to the ask which is good because we get our blinders on and we're just yeah. moving forward so. The other tool and opportunity is this report, Steve. We should be getting a report on this stormwater yes. framework this month. Yeah, end of this month, probably early February. Tomorrow we have a meeting with a consultant and we know for sure. Um, but yeah. We'll push them to coming pretty soon. Because we got a draft that we've looked at. So I think the goal is to get that report out too. And that would also be able to, you know, sort of um, possibly. That's the kind of thing that might merit a news and notice just because. This is a report from the consultant about yes. the state of our stormwater so two, infrastructure. Two main things for this report would be um, the budget, what we're trying to fund, it's both the operations and the capital budget for stormwater, and then the fee um, calculation. So we have a couple of different options of calculating the fee. So they'll present those those options and probably with a recommendation of which one is preferable. So those are two key things in this report that's coming up. I would I would be careful to float potential fees too early because with the proposal right now is that fees are set a year from now right. or correct. Right. But it's I'm, um, right, but we're, we're, I'm getting we're, nervous here. Well, yeah. the concern, <laughs> I think the concern is that the limited amount of money that has been in the operating budget yeah. is not sufficient yeah, in the in the future. And if you can put some specific specificity into that, then you know it gives a little bit more credence. Yeah, the, the danger is if the people if then if you float different fee structures too early. Oh, I don't. Not, yeah, then, not a fee structure. Yeah, no, but that's but in the an, report. An expense need. Yeah, yeah that's yes. clear. Expense need, but when when there are fee structures in the report and you float the, that, it's the actually the method of calculation, the methods of calculation okay. for the fees. You no, know? uh, they're pretty much based on impervious area. Yeah. So there are different ways of put it, packaging that together for commercial, for residential, for larger residential, that kind of thing. So it's, that's the focus. The, the different methods for calculation. Yeah. I'm gonna. Um, I have several points. One, I think it's important to check the ass assumptions we're making about people actually viewing those video recordings, the Zoom recordings. Does anybody look at the numbers of people who actually go back and view them? Uh, no, but we can. I mean, I the mean, question is, yeah, what kind of traction are we getting? It's one thing to create them, yeah. you know, a two a two hour meeting as brilliant as you would have been to to see. I have not, well, I have, must confess, I haven't watched that. Oh, you're missing. I know, I bet I am. Um, <laughs> you're the one that's missing in the statistic. <laughs> so seriously, I'm not, I mean, I think we've got to be cautious about our assumptions about yeah. 
uh, how, how much we're communicating out there and how many people are actually seeing it. That that said, I would suggest, I don't know, it, it may just not be possible from a, from a labor standpoint, but creating a summary, some kind of video summary of the issues, you know, which has excerpts from a meeting like that. I'm just throwing spitballing. Yeah, yeah. I'm not promoting that strongly, but just as a way to get people to absorb it, because I'm not going to probably sit through a two hour. No, so know? correct. So, Dave, I think the benefit is for those who are interested, if we, for instance, the, the forum, yep. there was only a third of the forum, there was two hours, but a third of it was dedicated towards stormwater. Right. And okay. just go to that. Yeah. You know, yes. when you go to right. the link. Um, the Public Works Commission meeting is another tool if you're interested and right. you might want to drill into it. I think what's really important is the, the community tends to look at its volunteers on various boards and committees as a kind of sounding board. And that's why it's really important to go to them because they're active, engaged, and communicate and have an interest. And right. that's where the town meeting that carries some weight. Right. Um, right. So... But what I have found is if people are busy and it's just not front and center, you can literally knock on their door, sing this song, and they're, they're just, get away from me. I don't right. know, I'm not paying attention right now. So it's that balance of not just doing things, but making it available so that when they talk to staff, yes. we can okay. direct them. Yeah. And that's really important. And yeah. I think capturing those and putting them on our website, there's a one-stop shopping, mm -hmm. is going to be very important. And I hear... And I and I and I respect the fact of reports and you know how much detail you know is there because really this ask was strategic. It's a framework followed by with an understanding of the need, okay. followed by a vetting more detailed with the Public Works Commission. That's part of the framework of the rate setting authority through town meeting would be given to the Public Works Commission. And then that would resolve in you know our own hearings to you know develop a budget and proposed rate schedule. Right. And I have one other point that I want to make, and it builds off of something Sven said or alluded to, which is that you know we've got this this, this if we've got this issue, the stormwater issue, and you're trying to build a framework, and that I'm hundred percent you know in support of what, what you're doing. But the reality is, as you alluded to, there's a lot of talk in the town about my taxes going up mm -hmm. and this is just a piece of and i think we need to be aware of presenting it you know, saying look we know you're being hit you feel may feel like you're being hit with all these these things we have to engage in the, this conversation in the context of we understand your larger you know costs that you as a family or a red conquer resident are facing mm -hmm. and and we and and we and part of it is this isn't just concrete. We're not just doing this because we're trying to be cool or we're trying to be leading edge. We're doing it because everybody in the state, whatever the answer is, right? Everybody in the state has to do it, or mm -hmm. words to that effect, or in the country. Yeah. It, so there's yeah. it's mandatory. Mm -hmm. So this is not something optional. But we need to do part of the cell needs to be bigger in the context of the other things we know you're facing. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this isn't going to be gigantic. This isn't going to determine whether or not you stay or leave the town. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, because like, I was listening to you when you talked about this, and I'll shut up in a sec. Um, you know, the last time, and I'm thinking, oh, is this going to be $10,000? You know, what's the number going to be? Yeah. You know, or is it going to be... That's right. You know, Because we talk big numbers, but we don't translate down to what's the cost. No, it's not going to be right. that. That's right. You know, in the scheme yeah. of things, it's not mm -hmm. going to change my lifestyle. Well, it will if we don't do something. Yes, I, <laughs> that's the point. I yes. think it actually... Even in the presentation at the Harvey Wheeler Center, like we have to talk about the consequences. Yeah. There are very big consequences if we don't do this. And I'm not sure that mm -hmm. is getting across to people or clear. I mean, you know, it's it, we love in infrastructure. Let's improve it. Yes. But it, for people who aren't there yet, we they have to know what the cost is of not doing it. It's not like free. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. You will pay for this one way or the other. Right. So that's really crucial to get across. So let me ask a question. I, I like Ellen's suggestion of NRC Planning Board and Sustainability as three committees that we might want to try and get a spot on their agenda. Who would be willing to be part of the learning group so we could have a presentation for that? 
I can. I am. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely. I would, I would go to one of the one of those meetings for sure, and I'd want coaching. No, oh, we, oh yeah, no, yeah, no, no, we yeah. we got to we got to yeah. rely on Alan. Yeah, yeah. to get Steve, get, myself, get started. Oh, yeah. you are. We'll staff will be able to talk the details, but really, just you know, this is an initiative that Public Works is really championing, and why? Yeah. And so our role would be what then as commissioners advocates and representatives of the community. So yeah. Yeah. my, yeah, my sense have. would be if we can get two people to go to a meeting that, that makes it more comfortable. Um, you know, you can feed off of each other or whatever. So yeah, it sounds like feel, we're all possibly willing to help. Mm -hmm. Alan, can we ask you to See if you can talk to the yeah, we'll the staff people. We'll see and, their and be, availability you know, and meeting and schedule. It, you know, yeah. Beginning next month yeah. or, or whatever. As soon as uh, once we agree to that as the approach, we were just to get back to we we're talking calendar. Yeah. So right now, what I'd say is, if we go with that approach, we'll leave the regular meeting for February fourteenth yeah. as a four to six, yeah. and we'll include um, the. Um, Articles, you know, and, yeah. and discussion on that, and then we'll do strategic meetings based on where they meet every biweekly. We'll yeah. we'll map that out before the hearings. Great. Okay. Okay. That's and then we'll share that with the um, commission, and we just need two volunteers. We don't have to deliberate about anything. We just need to know who's available, yeah. and then you can let me or Linda know if you're available on those dates, and then we'll. Divide and conquer. How's that sound? It, it, it just makes sense. Oh, and then uh, Jeff, do you have a you. Uh, comment? Mm -hmm. I, I have a. I have a question, but Terry has her hand up, and I'd like to hear what she has to say first, because my comment may link into what she has to say. Okay. Okay. Terry. <clears throat> okay. Um, great comments, um, Alan. I'm I'm really glad you did the forum. And um, the only thing I would say about the forum was. There were three parts and the stormwater came last. Um, I think stormwater really needs its own PR. So I'm really glad that you're going around to different um, committees. I hope you do come to the select board and the finance committee. Uh, Dave, I think that um, you're right. We need to put it in the context of all these other increases in tax bill from middle school and all the other projects we're doing. And I think putting this on a two year time frame is somewhat accomplishing that because we're not gonna raise fees this year. Yeah. And um, Jim, I um, maybe am not doing my liaison duty well enough. I did um, inform the select board during my liaison report about the stormwater and urge them to go to the forum. I brought it up another time. And I'm interested that you perceived that we didn't really know what we were talking about, about the article when we were ordering it and the, uh, the other night. And I guess what I want to know is, how can I do a better job um, informing the select board? What, what do you guys want to see there? Um, okay, Terry, I, I think you are the only one that has mentioned anything about stormwater, and you brought it up in your liaison comments. Um, the, the, the sense I have is that not many of the other select board members are aware much of what it is, whether, so I, if, if we can come and, and talk with, with you one meeting, that'd be great too. That would be great. And also several select board members were at the forum. So yes. they actually do know about it. And um, at the public hearing, um, you know, we're gonna have to take a position on it. So we will have to be totally educated on it. Sure. Thank you. Let me know what else I can do to help. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Jeff? Oh, there's Carly Lee. Sorry, go ahead. You go ahead, Jeff. You were late. Okay, thanks. And it's a comment I want to make, and I don't know if it, through the chair, if maybe you'll let, uh, or maybe Terry jumped off. No, she's still on. Maybe Terry can help with the answer on this. I think we need, my, in my opinion, I think we need to be careful by saying we need this because there are certain needs in town. 
and this is the way to address those needs versus we've been asking, we request money every year to address these needs. It hasn't been funded out of the, the town budget on a yearly basis. So this is a tool to have money dedicated for that because there is an option and that is the town dedicates more money to stormwater or stormwater infrastructure out of the town budget, but that hasn't been done for years. So I, I don't know how the other commissioners feel, but there is, this is not like, this is the only thing we can do. There are other things we can do, but they have, we've tried that for years and years and years and it hasn't been done. That's right. a plus, good point. Plus with the stormwater utility, property owners who have a lot of impervious service are going to be the ones who are helping yep. more with the funding and some of them are nonprofits. And so therefore they're, 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 they're not in the property tax so th this seems yes. to be a, fa a fairer way to allocate what the, the costs of the the needs are. Yeah, yes. that's yeah. a good, very good point. Very good point. Thank you. Anyone else has their hand? Carlin Reed. Hi, Carlin Reed, 83 Wits End. I'm a member of the Finance Committee and mm -hmm. I'm speaking on my own behalf. I'm glad to hear this. Are you folks going to be coming before the Finance Committee during the enterprise hearing, which is scheduled for March 21st. Here we go. Now we know then. Yep. It's a way of getting some more PR, especially since um, uh, Carmen Reese at the select board meeting called you the sleeper issue of the year, <laughs> which I thought was rather attractive, actually. Anyway, mm -hmm. but that's a suggestion. That's my recommendation on that. Thanks. That's it. Thank you, so, do you think that the finance committee has time and interest to see us before the hearing? Yeah, that would be. I want you to contact Parshar Patel and ask. He says okay. the schedule. He's the chair. Personally, I'd love to have you come because I think Carmen is right. This is a major change and we don't know enough about how it's going to be structured. The cost, yes, but how it's going to be structured is key. And I'd rather know about it before the hearing on the 21st, but that's my personal view. So Parshar is the gatekeeper. Talk to him, okay? Perfect. Should I reach out to Parshar? No, we can do that if you want. Okay. We're here to make your work a little lighter, but we'll, I, don't I, mind. Can, I can talk to I just to want done like yeah we'll, yeah, we'll make sure. We want it done tomorrow, you do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm happy. And by the end of the week, we'll take care okay. of it. <laughs> That's the longest we've ever talked about the calendar. That's the calendar. <laughs> okay, so we should, should we go to our next action item? All right. Thank you for that feedback. So this is um so scenic roads D one scenic roads draft regulation. Another. Getting there. So I don't. Do you want? We could go through the um. We go through the memo and talk about what the staff has pointed out are still issues. And then head to the um, comments by town council on it to cover anything that this memo doesn't that you guys might have noticed. That could, sounds good. Can we be clear on the our purpose of our listening? What we're the commission is being asked to do here? So I think we're being asked to weigh in on these um, on what the town council has told us about the confusing nature of the authorities involved in the scenic bylaw, and then we're going to be asked to vote on what we're recommending to the planning board. Like, do we approve of this? Would we like to see more changes? I think there are some changes we might want to make uh, based on what the staff comments were about, the staff comments about the comments from town council about the bylaw. So. And to the credit to the commission, you, when this first came up, we were a little on our heels, you know, it's sort of, we didn't have this, coordination up front, regrettably, to work with planning before there was a bylaw passed. But now that it's passed, and there's a better understanding of the potential implications, with this commission's voice, we were able to sort of make a message. I believe the planning uh, board has listened, which is great. Um, I guess the process is working. Uh, there are some nuances to it all. And you know, I think uh, there has been improvement. Uh, from the first draft to the second, and now that there was enough to go to council for review, 
at our request. Um, there's been some feedback, and what I'd like to do is, uh, you know, have maybe Steve Dukran and Aaron Fosco up just at the table if you have questions on it, you know, um, just so they can help. Uh, and I think, Dave, to the point of, there's one final, line, not, one, not one final, the planning board will have a hearing on this. They haven't had a public hearing yet. So this is the last opportunity to sort of get the draft as close as everybody's comfortable with before they then have a public hearing. And at least Public Works Commission's voice will have been heard, you know, beforehand. And that's where really just sort of honing in on, you know, the specifics at this point. But there's been a lot of improvement because of the involvement. And, okay. uh, and I think there's you know, some details. And I think if you get into details, Steve and or Aaron can kind of help, you know, you understand the perspective. And I would also just volunteer another outcome. And I think uh, for uh, Jeff Basher was very interested in this. The roads policy, which was where originally this protection existed, you know, it was within the you know responsibility of public works through this 1999, you know, a roads policy. We agreed that once this gets resolved, we'll then go back and revisit that policy just to make sure, you know, that really set the guidelines on how does public works, you know, respond to these sorts of, you know, kind of broader issues, not just the scenic roads, but townwide. So we will revisit that, but that's a step two. Is that helpful? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So the the planning board is going to have a meeting on January 30th to talk about any but these changes and any more suggestions we make. They want to have the public hearing on February 20th. So this is our last meeting before they meet to talk about the public. So if we could get it done this meeting, that would be great for everyone involved. But um, do you guys want to make comments about the memorandum that you sent, or should we just go through it paragraph by paragraph? Um, well, I can give an overall view of what staff came up with. Uh, I think when the planning division sent the latest vision of the draft regulations to the town council, they asked that they compare the proposed regulations with this all of policies and, and the bylaw that governs the right. roadway. And I think that's the extent of the request to town council, just to look, identify conflicts and overlapping authority. And they did in their in their letter from town council, it talks about several of those. Um, and going through, I didn't see several. I saw some. And in fact, I saw that overlapping authority kind of repeated a few times, but it's the same issue. Uh, they identified like three different approvals and they asked which one comes first. Yeah. They asked that we work that out, work through that. Um, in terms of conflicts, the conflicts were really between what the proposed regulations were versus what the state MGLs yeah. presented. So the conflicts weren't really between the local regulations. That's that's my my view. And, and then further on, I mentioned in the memo, our memo, uh, <clears throat> there were some questions that the the uh, letter from this commission to planning board uh, had brought up. Uh, those weren't addressed by town council. Maybe they couldn't. Um, but those we we tried to. I'll reiterate those and we can discuss those further. Okay. So one question on you. Um one thing that's in here again is um with respect to the historic relevance of the stone wall. So there is a historic character and value paragraph in there. It it reads a little bit broad and not is is this is this not covering your concerns yeah or no um because we we often we we want to stop stop that um we built some new stone walls on cambridge turnpike when we did that road a couple of years ago should the cambridge turnpike become a scenic road in the future would those stone walls that were put in just a few years ago, would they now be subject to this 
in this law and his regulations. All right. Yeah, I'm but gonna... the, the paragraph says it's in evaluating an application, the planning board shall consider consideration uh, of historic buildings, structures, historic, and so on. So there, there is this historic element. Right. In it, it's perhaps not explicitly pointing to what you're meaning, but. Could could it be put in there, or could so is there something to say? It's like when when you deal with that, you look at the the, the historic relevance of the stone wall, and that is so. Just taking the current roads that are scenic mm -hmm. roads, there are there any new stone walls in the public right away that we would have to go to town council to define. So not a one that the, the, the ten roads are sort of currently uh, designated as scenic. No, we haven't built any stone walls. Um, okay. rec recently, at least uh, that I'm aware of. In the, okay. Right. Um, a Strawberry Hill Road, that is a, there's a fairly new one on house. They, they moved their driveway and they put in a stone wall. That might be two years ago. So it was, before. but it's on public way. Or... Well, there, it's pretty. It's pretty close to the roadway. Whether it's whether it's in the right of way, okay. I we'd have to have a surveyor to know, yeah. right? Let's go through this. Actually, let's just go through this in in order. Then the memo. Yeah. Um, so, town council's memo or our memo? Our orders? memo, the public works commission memo, yeah. the memo to us okay. from from yep. the, okay from Alan. Okay, so. In the second paragraph, it's talking about overlapping authority. This overlapping occurs primarily in sections that require three steps, right of way, permit from CPW, a joint hearing before the tree warden and planning board, and written approval from both the planning board and tree warden. So the town council says that this order doesn't really matter. It doesn't have legal significance, but clarification may be useful. I would say Clarification is crucial right. because we want people to be able to say these are yep. the steps we need to take to get through this incredibly burdensome process now that we have. So I do agree with that. I think probably you guys all agree with that because we've discussed it so much. Um, so the clarification that you guys that you guys propose does that seem good for? Does everyone on the commission agree? Generally, a row permit is issued only after the need for work has been established. So they are saying that um, this, the row app permit application instructions both have instructions on how to do that. So we're, they're going with, um, I wrote down the order of everything. So the, or, the order that that would happen in, does everyone see an order? Is that where is that the word is spelled out? Let me see. So, no, uh, you wouldn't find it on a town council's um, review. They said it, we have to figure that out as a town. Okay. So, I can tell you what number three is. Because okay. I, I suggested that. Number three is the right of way permit, which is consistent with what we do with our outside approvals. Uh, so, it comes up to number one and two. Okay. Which goes first, and Aaron can speak to this. Okay. Um, yeah. Do you have? And this is pretty much with respect to the public shade tree. Uh, is it the tree hearing first, and then the written approval by the tree warden and the planning board? Um, that's that's the one and two that need to be figured out. The hearing needs to be the first thing that happens. Sorry, the joint hearing and then approval because it could be approved and it could be denied. Because later it, it they recommended approval by CPW first yeah. to have the hearing, which then the tree warden, not the planning board, would would schedule. Correct. But the planning board has to be there. Then written approval of the planning board and the tree warden. All this used to get done. Yeah. But now we have this added stuff. Going to keep pointing that out, but yes, it still gets done. It still gets done, <laughs> but now we have to coordinate with the planning board. Right. Okay. So they would need to attend. So the public would post a hearing is typically at the tree midday. And we would post we post in the tree, post in a local journal for two consecutive weeks prior to the hearing. Um, and then we have the hearing at the tree. And 
a typical process is if I receive or the tree warden receives any objection, the tree warden denies the removal of the tree. No. Any objection from anyone? Does that seem that'll still work for you? Yes. Because and the town council was clear that that scheduling of that meeting comes from you and not the planning board. That's correct. They were very clear about that. Yeah. Okay. One of my concerns is this has not become too burdensome. Or is it oh, it's too it? late for that. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's really, it's, it's really the fact of like hey, the most burdensome piece would be uh, you know the fact that when you have a tree hearing, the one staff member or person that is required to be there is the tree warden, right? So on the tree warden schedule too well. Uh, but now you're including a planning board, which is a multi-member board. You know, and it's typically during the day when general public can be there and whatnot. I mean, times can be flexible. That's typically when we do it. Um, we do usually notify the person that's requesting removal so they can be present. Um, usually somewhat involved. Usually it's like a direct to butter, right? Um, and so making sure that the other folks can attend so they can get a quorum would be some potential scheduling conflict. But um, usually it's at least two weeks in advance that we post the trip. It, it 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 always is at least two weeks in advance, and so hope there's enough time to get everybody that needs to be there there. Uh, so it's what we're proposing. Um, a line up with what your your understanding. Yes. What's so uh, yeah, to yeah. You? So we uh, you know Steve and I went through you know and, and discussed this before the memo was was put together for the commission. So we're we're on board. So okay. so our position would be we support town council order of that. Well. Yeah. So let me ask you, Madam Chair, is it too late? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the regulations say here on a public hearing 2.2, as required by statute, the board shall give notice of a public hearing we serve as planning board by advertising twice. Do they really need to have a hearing? A tree hearing, the planning board, can that be eliminated? And well, does the tree warden have the hearing? He, the tree warden will be the one to schedule it, right. and the planning board is now because just strictly because of the scenic bylaw, the planning board is supposed to be there. Yeah, that's if they. It's my understanding. If, so they are required to have a plan board is required to have a hearing. Okay. No. In in jointly with the tree warden. Yeah, they I understand are, it yeah. really bad. But what if they didn't require to have a hearing? Then they don't do a hearing. Well, my understanding is that it's required for that. They require that. Okay. <clears throat> Right. As we support town council position. And so they didn't have a position on the order, but does that order make sense? Yeah, in the comment on the document, they're more or less. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now what? Well, and just to be aware, this coordination may be. You know, this is the devil is in the details where it's easy when there's an individual kind of setting the hearing date. He doesn't have to check in. It'll be interesting to see what kind of impact does this have on the customer when there has to be, well, now it's, we got to get a quorum of, and does two weeks turn into three weeks, four weeks? And that's always what we talked about with scheduling challenges and coordination. But I think that's Aaron going to be a burden of the tree warden to try and facilitate a time that is works for planning, correct? He doesn't have to facilitate it, though. They have to facilitate being there. They're yeah. the ones who wanted this. And I think it says <laughs> in the bylaw that it's supposed to be within 45 days. So they only have so much time to play with. That's what they want. This all happened without them. No, no, no. Understood. But I just think public works and staff and whatever we do, we're always trying to, you know, our customers, everybody, including other boards and commissions. So mm -hmm. I just, I hear you, but we may not have you a lot of flexibility. We only have so much time to facilitate, so. <laughs> they have, there's a 45-day window. You have a two-week notice. So you have, in, in, in the end, mm -hmm. not many days where you can put a... It, it's a, it, a typical process before, yeah, yeah for a... a public shade tree, it usually takes weeks because there's, you know, by the time you get the notice to the newspaper, they need a week to prepare it. And it goes in the following week's uh, publication for two weeks. So it's usually three weeks out from the time that say, okay, we're having a tree 
hearing, at least on our tree. So say give it a good month. Um just for so are we prepared like to control. just make sure it's clear that is what we're it's clear. Doing. I mean it is in like yeah. several places. Okay. It's yeah. pretty clear. I don't know how you could get around it. Um, I will say whenever you have regulation on top of regulation on top of regulation, you have a certain amount of people who are going to try to follow it to the letter. You're going to have other people who look for those loopholes. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. unfortunately what may be happening once we I, I would only encourage that wherever kind of people find the information about what they need to do, it's, it's somehow, somehow easily summarized. Yes. Right, right. <laughs> So they that, that, that the property owner can let's say find on a web page kind of either a flow chart or a easy one, two, three mm -hmm. step saying this is what is going to happen if you're in, in a scenic road area. Um that they understand what's going on. Yeah, I think they might and I guess that was just considerations of the decision. Are we going to talk later about the cost of not adhering to this policy? Yeah, yeah that'll be so, part of it. Yeah, but just but when we say this is remember a planning board rules and regulations, right? This is their rules and regulations. So we have yeah, my comment here. Yeah. We have or and the he treatment. has to he has to deal with this and it, exactly. <laughs> yes. And so you know when there isn't a quorum, if a meeting needs to be set and the quorum can't happen, that's what I see. Yeah. Potential. They we just need to understand because we're the customers are what we're trying to understand where they and we need to just have the planning board maybe discuss this right and that's and part of what they need to and, and perhaps that there's one of the positions not in written but let's say you know verbal overlay to the planning board members uh, a commissioner can can take a position to make clear that planning board understands um, there is. A, the expectation mm -hmm. that there is a quorum from the planning board when the tree board sets up a hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can talk about, so the next thing is the fee for tree replacement. The next thing in the memo, if we're going through the memo, but from the Public Works Department to us, Town Council does not support the imposition of a $375 per inch fee in addition to replacing the tree finding, finding it duplicative. Further, they view the fee that the fee gives the character of a fine, which will also be assessed for violation. CPW agrees with this with proceeding with this with requiring only the replacement of the removed tree with new ones as proposed. Then there was a discrepancy between the penal with the penalties. Town Council identified inaccuracies in the application of MGLs. That's a Mass General Law. Applying fines for violations of the scenic roads bylaw and propose the correct language. The fine is capped at three hundred dollars. Although you guys found something in the MGL that said the cap is set at five hundred dollars, which is nowhere in the memo from town council. So I never saw that five hundred dollars except for what you guys sent to us. Yeah, so Mass General Law Chapter Eighty Seven is public shade tree law, yeah. and okay. there it states five hundred dollars the cap for for any type of damage or any or anything that's unauthorized. Um, by the tree board. So do we need the, the town council to figure out that? And the town council is proposing. Or they, they, yeah, they, they propose, I think, a, a lower amount. Yeah. yeah. Whoever they're to that, I don't know if that originally came from somebody else, but yeah. we were suggesting we're dealing with that, revising that to the $500 limit. And then as far as the fee for tree replacement, doing a, you know, inch per inch replacement, um, which is what we would like to see rather than that money going to who knows where, right? To an account, mm -hmm. do some plantings and, and holding folks um, because the, the value of planting inch per inch is often higher, yeah. uh, is more than what we, sure. what, we, what we would charge. So, you know, um, the cost of, you know, rough cost of installing a tree can be somewhere around, you know, uh, $1,500 for a two to three inch caliper, caliper tree right now. So, can you explain inch per inch? Just so, inch clear. per inch is, you know, the standard in here, which you know, looking through the language, it says, uh, you know, one foot above the ground, I think is what the planning board thought. Yeah. But, tech, you know, the standard is DBH and diameter of breast height, essentially, of a tree um, is uh, inch is how, how it's really measured. It's kind of a standard. Um, 
you know, anything over one and a half inch DBH is considered a public shade tree and is protected by Mass General Law Chapter 37. So we're looking for inch per inch replacement. So if you're taking down a 36 inch caliper tree, which is a pretty substantial size tree, mature tree, they're, they're replacing it with 36 inches worth of worth of tree. Yeah. So taking a three inch caliper tree, you know, 12 trees. So can I point them up? Aaron, I don't know if you looked at the latest. It says square inch, the square inch basis. Um, we probably don't have a copy of the rules. Yeah, that's much more than 12 trees. My concern is that $300, even $500 for someone who's building a stone wall and doing a major renovation. This is this like, trees, right? Yes, it is is the cost of doing business. And if I'm too tangled up in procedures, mm -hmm. I'm going to cut the tree down and pay the three hundred dollars. I'm just being frank. I'm I'm yeah. not going to do it. No, no, but, I understand. Yeah. Oh, but you have to replace the tree too. Um, and that's why that's important. I think that. Yeah, but the replacement is. So in, in a certain way, yeah. so it's a fine plus the replacement cost. Well, it's not a fine. <laughs> it's a, a fee. So the fee. So the fee would. I think the fee is the replacement. We're suggesting the fee is the replacement of. Essentially, equal amount of trees. Mm -hmm. square, square square for this document. Rather than a, a actual a plant financial plant. payment, right? It's the plantings. So work with the tree ward, select the planting, select the location. And I would note that the planting might not be directly abutting that property. We have plenty of places right. in the town where we can use a tree. And you know, we we often use the term uh right tree in the right place. We okay. might not want to replant in that location okay. just due to the Amount of roadway width or right of way width we have in that area to allow for you know a successful tree planting a mature tree might have uh might get you know a, a better impact for the community as a whole if we relocate the tree into some other place. Mm -hmm. I have a but question it, on that, Aaron. I don't I'm not disagreeing with you. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if they have to work with you to select a tree, does that add more administrative time versus they're just paying a dollar amount per inch caliper we would want to we would want to be heavily involved in that process so technically nobody can plant a tree on the public right away without right. the of the drown tree warden and we the tree warden uh, eric shaw and myself as the deputy now we hands his hand select every tree that we that we plant in town so going to the nursery looking under the stock inspecting the tree once they deliver yep. inspecting the trees making sure they're in the right location we get species diversity you know throughout town we like to be involved in that and I think there's a higher value to the town by planting trees rather than collecting a fee. If you go by the inch well, per square inch. Fee but I, well, I was assuming the fee would go into an account where you would then go out and select a tree and it'll be paid for out of that account. Maybe that was an incorrect assumption. Well, that happens. So that's the current I guess, central format for the um, tree protection bylaw, which governs yeah. private trees and private property for development demolition. Addition, renovation, those kind of things. That's kind of how it's structured. Um, I think what this is proposing is working with the whoever the property owner is, developer, whoever's pulling the permit, essentially on. Okay, here's the trees that we want to see and planted, and these are the locations we want to plant them. And be required to plant them. Well, I, I defer with what to what you want to do. I'm just thinking well, negotiating I, I, over a a cheap red maple versus an expensive something <laughs> else. They're going to go with the cheap red maple. The tree you, right you have to, and you're <laughs> the one that has to negotiate that. Yeah, I think, and I think that's part of this. I mean, it's captured it at, in part of the permit, right? That would be a capture in that process, right? Yeah. What, what the what the requirements are, the specifics are. Okay. Right. I okay. guess I would from your from your perspective, it's the tree warden's prerogative. It just happens to be on a scenic road that also has additional complications, but. If it was on a different road or a scenic road, you're, what you would want to do is the same thing. Correct. Yeah. It doesn't matter that it's on a, right. from the tree right. warden standpoint, it doesn't matter that it's on a scenic road. Right. He's going to do what he was going to do if it happened anywhere in town. Because uh, all these yep. protections exist for all the streets in Concord. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. There's for... a public shade. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, so but just on on a three hundred dollar cap, I mean, there's nothing we can decide on that. That's no, oh, I mean, the three hundred versus five hundred. Well, they can't do yeah. more than three hundred. Yeah. Right. So period. Yeah. So that's not not something we need to discuss with. Yeah. With respect to fine well, clarification. Just, that's yeah, just yeah, clarification. Of, yeah. And we had brought up that point before. So mm -hmm. the only question is then, and we discussed that um, on the replacement of trees, typical practice, the only difference here is now we are talking about square inch versus inch. As as Does that change a lot for you? Or I don't think, as long as we're talking, it's, as long as it's either apples, apples, or oranges. Or okay. We should be okay. Okay. So do we have do we have to ask the planning board to send this back to town council to so we can figure out if the fine is capped at three hundred or five hundred? Yeah, converting is in there. Oh, it's our it's already in there. It's, it's the last enforcement penalty. Anyone who fails to comply, blah, 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 a fine not to exceed three hundred dollars per violation. But I think, I think the shade tree says it can be five hundred dollars. The shade, but it doesn't. But they've got it down as three hundred. Okay. And it's three hundred. Let's not okay. fuss about. All right. I just, I, I just wanted to make sure. I agree. Yeah. But I wanted to make sure we didn't have to. We weren't skipping a step and telling the planning board we were okay with that. So. Well, actually, we were wondering whether town council missed it, this, as applied to just shade trees. Yeah. Right. Right. But, 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 but the scenic roads by law, apparently, legislation says three hundred. Well, no. well, that's proposed. Yeah, no, it's. I think it's, it's. So, Mass General Law says a cap of five hundred. It's a maximum of five hundred. Right. For the tree, for the shade tree. Correct. Yeah, that's the state. For shade MDL is state. Yes. That's where we got the larger number. The right. three hundred yeah. may reflect back on other fines that are issued town wide. No, it's the that's the bylaw for the scenic bylaws. That's what the state says the cap is if you violate oh, it. Oh, got it. For the for the oh. scenic bylaw, scenic. see if the scenic, scenic. bylaw cap is three hundred. Oh, the bylaw, yes. yeah. the shade yeah. tree is five. Shade tree is five hundred. Yeah. So it's that's what you. So we just we want. Um, I guess it depends on how. So, mass, so the scenic, so the scenic roads, is it's embedded within master law chapter eighty seven. The scenic road bylaw is embedded. So by, by scenic road. Bylaws are town. The bylaws are it's a town law. Town, yeah. The Mass General Law references and talks about a, a town made grade a scenic road bylaw. That garbage is within Mass General Law Chapter eighty seven within the public shade tree law. It's a subsection, so I can pull. <laughs> pull it up. I'm just pulling their section up here. Yeah, no, we, we have to check and double check that. It's it's so it's three hundred versus five. So, so that's what I'm just wondering, like. Do you, do you guys want to pursue that and have town council figure it out? Yeah, get some clarification. So I think I think part of the process is we will likely talk with planning, mm -hmm. right? They need to go. They're going to discuss this. So they get the same comments from council, and they need mm -hmm. to go through this vetting. So we will probably talk with staff. Yes. Highlight these issues, these you know points of yeah. you know questions, differences, you know, know. and and make sure that it there. Because their meeting matters because they're the ones come up to finalize the language. They're meeting so, on January 30th to do that. That's right. And so they will be working with their staff who will be providing some you know, feedback. I don't think they've, I don't know, Steve, if they've had any discussion on council's opinions yet. No, no. They yeah. asked for a meeting and I told them we'll have a meeting after we have this meeting tonight. So you so, you already are planning to meet with them. Staff. Okay. Yes. Staff. Yeah. It's, and use this conversation discussion to flag rub points of yeah. do we understand this? So they can then have this deliberation. Right. But I'm just meeting. what I'm trying to do is like save everybody time. So yeah. like if they know if we're going to ask them to go back to town council on this, they need time to do that. I mean, it took how long for them to get to town council this time around? Like too long. Too so long. just to update everyone, it's section 15C, just the scenic scenic road designation. And in there, just for scenic roads, it is capped at three hundred dollars. Hmm. No matter what, what the other section of yeah. mass so, general law says. I think just leave it at three leave, leave it, it at three hundred dollars. Don't, so, don't fuss about it. So council's yeah. doing their job. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's got a okay. question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so Steve, what did the oh, Jeff. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. Right. Oh yeah, I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> so 
maybe this was stated earlier. It's hard to follow everything when I'm not in the room. <laughs> but any any tree that's subject to the scenic bylaw will be in the public right away. So it's subject to the shade tree bylaw. Mm -hmm. So I think you, Andrea, Andre, you may have referenced this earlier. They should just be the same thing because yeah. for the town, because why should staff have to determine which thing to apply? Just apply one standard. And what what scenic tree is not going to go through the shade tree review well, that anyway? Was our point forever. Right, yeah. right. That so many times, but. I, it was not heard. So here we are. Here we are. So, yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. I Now you have to decide. But I think by deciding it's at 300 is the cap. At the moment, it's it, 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 if it's within the, the scenic road, it's 300. If it's outside, it's 500. Right. It doesn't but, make sense but, to me. But, but, but the wording, so the wording could be changed. Yes. To to reference the five hundred dollars in the state shade tree issue. It's true. No, in, spent, instead of referencing the scenic bylaw. So is that three hundred dollars? Is that for violation of the bylaw? So that includes stone walls. Yeah. And trees, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So specifically, just any public shade tree, there's a max cap of five hundred dollars for cutting, damaging of a tree. Not referencing a stone wall. Just that's right. And Sven is volunteering that outside the scenic road designated trees, the five hundred would be the cap. Yeah. But I think just it's council's way in. We need clarification, and really the two hundred dollar difference is really not the issue. We got to get get it, it right and have the have the engineers do the engineering and the legal people do the legal stuff. So that's a question. But really the um replacement is really where there's teeth and yeah. that's where you know just a clarification kind of having the um, who and this is a question is going to determine what tree where and does do we get into any complication with planning board having an opinion that may be different than a yeah. tree ward? that's a question i think it, may, it seems to make clear that the tree warden is like the authority on the issue. So, I mean, I guess they can always question that authority. We just, I think we need to clear, we'll make yes, sure we, that's we not got, a- Yes, we gotta make sure that that's clear. that's clear. Yeah. That if it's a tree, it's a tree board. Oh, it's just the irony that this bylaw would actually lessen the fine for removing a public tree mm -hmm. is too much, too much. Okay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I would say, yeah, I, I I don't know. No, but no. you would, you, <laughs> it's, yeah. You were going to say like the tree war, the tree, the public shade tree should override the scenic bylaw. Yeah, I don't see how you don't enforce both because this is just a bylaw right. to talk about. That there's still yep. Mass General right. is enforced as well. Yeah. And technically, the, the tree ward does not have a ticket book. I will tell you that. So any violation would be enforced. It's a Mass General law. I would assume the police department gets involved in the actual one. <laughs> they they fine. I would assume. I don't know if that's clarified anywhere or who's. I don't think it is clarified. But typically, you know, in a citation is issued or references a master neural law. Um, okay. And you remember it says cap, but it doesn't require. That's where there's flexibility, I think. Just a cap. Yeah, I think non criminal offenses, I don't think you need to have police involved. It can be done by civilian. Yeah. If I can collect the money. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hold on. Okay, to the next edition of Stonewall. <laughs> oh, sorry, one more question, Aaron. For, and I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. For the shade tree bylaw, do you measure DBH to determine the value, the, the dollar amount that they need to contribute versus square inch? So we do not, for the, for the scenic world bylaw? No, for the shade tree, how we do you measure? So we, so we do not have a shade tree bylaw in town. With the tree protection bylaw, which is applicable for applicable to trees located on private properties, the town currently does not have a shade tree bylaw. 
Okay, so this re that re Mass General Law, Public Shade Tree Law. Which uh, says what? Says in reference. It just references the five hundred dollar fine for removal. That's it. There's not a replacement. Correct. Correct. Okay, got it. Thank you. So Stonewall definition. Um, so we talked, we already talked about this a little bit, the age of the stone wall. So there's no new stone walls on the current scenic roads, right? No, I'm aware of, but the one on Strawberry Hill? I think, I, I mean, it's pretty close to the pavement. So Probably I'm if, if it's not, if it's on private way, most of the Strawberry Hill Road does not have to worry about stone walls. Stone walls. Because that it, that ties in with Stonewall location. Who decides? Who decides what is in the public right of way? Because right now the determination in the application is made by the surveyor. Wait, can we go back to the definition? Mm -hmm. I think we we have to recognize when we started on this. I don't know ages ago there was literally no definition yeah, of Stonewall. It's, it's improved quite yeah, a bit. So. And based on our comments and our our letter, they went actually to that professor of Yukon who is working on this Stonewall initiative. So um, from the sections I participated in the planning board meetings was clear they got kind of they they went with kind of the professor who whatever name he yeah uh, yes is a this is kind of the best definition of a stone wall they could do. Um, with respect to the historic character, I would probably propose to to look at um, the the section two three two uh, to ask for an addition at least in there to say it's in evaluation yeah. and application. Planning board shall take into consideration all of this what is in there, and in there we should have something like should take into consideration the historic character of the stone wall mm. that we have it in because there okay. we have the whole historic part <laughs> and to us to include that kind of two or three words. Sven, where do you see that? Where do you section two, two, two three, three, two. three two. Two, three, two. Okay. The fact that the stone wall itself is wrong. Yeah, because they're only talking about um, existing build features are historic building, structure mm -hmm. sites, historic documents, historic burial ground. So they talk about history there. I think is we should have kind of the historic character of the stone wall itself. Yeah. Are you saying we should put that within the definition or just pay? In, in section in, in 232. Two, yeah, I, I think 232 is, yeah. is the way to determine, to determine if it's historically if it has historical character yeah so it's good there or should we take uh, my, for me would be good i don't know what so, okay. so let's, let's let's take a second to walk yeah. through this right so say the stone wall rather recent stone wall on strawberry hill road falls within the right of way and some alteration needs to be done on that whether it's a, for a public project or for a private project according to these rules as they are laid out they have to go to a planning board application, right? And you have to follow all, all of the requirements. And the, for the plan board to make a decision whether to allow them, allow whoever, the applicant, to make that alteration, they have to apply all of these considerations. They can choose, you see, yeah. not to yeah. use historic character. They can choose the other criteria but here it said, sh sh shall take into consideration. It's not may, it should not be could. No. It's a shall. So, okay. So that means <laughs> they have to. They have, they have to. to. Yes. So now what defines historic? Uh -huh. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah that's, that's a good question. I mean, yeah. But, you know, in, in that paragraph, they talk about 19th century and earlier. Yeah. Those are quite a long yeah, time, time ago. <laughs> Yes, and, and the reason <laughs> why that creeps into the picture, and that the definition of the set of roads that they have now, that's how they had gone through. Uh, if you go back to when this went to town meeting, they, when they were laid out, when they were laid out, and so on. So it's really based on that age of the stone walls or roads, actually, road layout. 
be clear that it's the buildings where it has the plans. Not yeah, I know. Yeah, but I, 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 that, that's that's why I hope we put time. this in <laughs> in the right place to to the exact. And I would say it's historic relevance. It also gives you kind of additional angle that it might be historic, but not historically relevant. So, yeah, <laughs> and, and so taking it for the why would we put so, an applicant through the process? Because now we have a higher surveyor, all of that, pay the application fee. And if you already know, well, this doesn't meet the historic nature. Correct. I, mean, I think that's our point. I mean, if it doesn't meet historic nature, it shouldn't be so under the, this. You should have an application at all to start with. You don't have to spend the thousands of dollars to get before the planning board. Yeah. Yeah, but you still have to go through because an applicant probably doesn't know when was actually the stone wall built and done. And so someone <laughs> needs to go through the records no matter what, the moment you are, someone is touching a wall. You have to go through record anyway. Is it on, on a public right of way? Yes, yes or no. <laughs> How old is it? <laughs> There's so many things you have to go through anyway. Let me ask the question. And how does that translate to what public works needs to understand? If at all, isn't that what the planning? Yeah. Uh, board wants that and. Whether you like it or not, it's really is it a call? Does does it relate to you know the right of way? You know, sort of in how public works needs to be involved because we talk about character and that's the whole policy. But is it you know are you comfortable just leaving those decisions to the planning board? You know, and that's it's part of the challenge you have is we're trying to streamline and explain. Do you say how to how to explain this? You know, well, geez, this. Stone has been here for the ages, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's moved. Now it's a wall. But is that, is yeah, that it, our? Yeah, is that our, you know, yeah, area? Of, you know, do we need to, you know, wrestle with that or not? Just a question. So I started talking earlier about Cambridge Turnpike, right? Which uh, may have someday be designated. So the project widened the roadway, added sidewalks, and built new walls. Nice looking walls. Everybody <laughs> wanted nice looking walls. Um, if indeed that becomes a scenic road, then we need to widen the sidewalk even further because now we have the need. Transportation. Or add some drainage or whatever. <clears throat> now do we file an application to the planning board and go through the, the whole process? And they may deny. We might make a split to mitigate and build even nicer walls. Uh, all of that. You know, it's, we have to have that concern. I think we 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 have that challenge in well in all the scenic roads right now. It's yes, we do. Luckily, um, Cambridge Turnpike is. I think I think is um, we cannot avoid synchronizing with the planning board and and, and coming to a working relationship on scenic roads with the planning board. And um, I think so far my understanding here in Concord is that at least committees and boards try to be somehow friendly to each other. Um, so I I would right now not expect unfriendly, unreasonable. And it's no. and usually it's not that. It's some it's sometimes it comes down to um interpretation. You know, we, we deal with that all the time, laws and regulations and you know, and everybody has their own spin of it, what you need to do. Um Andrea pointed out the last time. The Monument Street application that went in, uh, the surveyor said the walls and outside of right away, and then we were told, well, it's close enough. It's close enough, therefore it had to yeah. have an application. Is there um is there any <clears throat> point in and maybe you've already done this in talking? I understand um that uh, uh, several towns have this law, right? There's a scenic bylaw in um in enacted that point was made at town meeting mm -hmm. last year when this whole thing was being pushed mm -hmm. we're kind of behind the times or you know i'm just saying that's you know i'm saying that was the argument and, yeah. and i'm wondering if there's any point in talking to some dpw directors in other towns saying how did you work this out 
you know, how has this sorted itself out? Or we have, done that? We, you, we have. You've already done that. Yeah. And yeah. are there any insights into that are useful in this kind of discussion without, you know, going down a rabbit hole? Well, I mean, I don't want it. Right, let me tell you the one that I always, I always remember. I talked to the superintendent of highways in this town. Actually, no, he's the director. And he said, um, he just resigns to the fact that he can't do anything that he wants to do for improvements on these city roads. Really? Uh -huh. Yeah. Narrow streets and he can't put in sidewalks, he can't put in bike lanes, he just has to live with his 16 foot pavement with. Yeah. And does, does that insight inform anything we say to the planning board? I mean, or to inform forming, or does that mean that that's what we're going to be stuck with too? I think and yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, it's hard to try to make the best out of it, right? Yeah. And, and the answer is pretty much what Van just said, really about you know, everyone thinks that when the time comes, everybody's be nice and helpful and cooperate, uh, which is great, but just resigning that I cannot do what I need to do mean that I'm cooperating, yeah. So I, I would still propose that we say ask for adding to section two point three point two some in there uh, historic character and relevance of a stone wall in that list. To add to that, to add to what's on what's what's in there. Okay. There's a list of things, and in there should be historic character and relevance of a stone wall. Um, for the Stonewall location, we still don't we don't know what determines that. Like like the Monument Street, you know, the surveyor said one thing, then the planning department said another, and it went to the it. Well, it didn't really go through the application no. process at all. So, um, and that is going to be left to town staff, not to boards and committees. So, is that something we should go back to town council for? Like who makes that determination? Because you also don't want it switching like, oh, these people have worked in this department and they do it this way. Now there's a whole new staff. Now we're going to do it differently. Like, I don't like that changing <laughs> depending on who's in charge. It's just not because then you have, be it a developer or a private homeowner or public works always having to figure out what the new process is with the new staff. So, so and I think public books can get out of it because it's pretty clear if something is, um, you know, something is determined to be in the right of way. Well, we know what our jurisdiction is, right? I think it's okay. It's, we don't have to wait on this as somebody else, but is that serving the community the right way and the fair way? Because if it's left up to interpretation, right? How do we know that everyone is going to be treated the right way? And I think that's a, if we are part of this community, trying to see, serve the community, you know, the right way. I think the definition of how this is determined should be. But do you have a concrete proposal how the language should be? <clears throat> I don't know. So maybe town council might be able to answer that. Uh, I don't know. They sure. might say there's nothing of legal significance there. It's really a, a town issue. So we're talking about section 1.4.3, which says that you need a stamp survey plan if there's questions. Yeah. Is that typical? Is that way beyond what we typically do right. in so, other, other streets? No, that's typical for most uh, applications for um, any kind of land use permit. Um, you want to make sure this is your land, right? So you yep. make sure the boundary shows what you show what's within your private okay. property. Uh, uh, but we know surveyors, how surveyors operate. They draw a plan, you go the right of way line or the 
property line. And then they, if it's a stone wall, they will put a stone wall that it's in this side or on that side or, and so on and so forth. So um, <clears throat> it pre could be pretty clear to you whether the stone wall is privately owned or publicly owned or owned by both parties. And the, the definition of right away, right? I think in there, yep. one of those definitions talks about the stone wall is, um, is within the right of way or on the right of way or something like that. Yep. It's considered to be um, public unless proved otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. So now that's where the surveyor comes in. He's gonna help you prove whether it's private or public. Um, but it still comes down. They said, I think the Monument Street experience was a good one for us because we saw how there can be conflicting views on it. So, well, except my my recollection of what Andrea told us is that the surveyor said it was on private land, and the planning board said, "No, you're not right." So, in according to this, is the surveyor makes the determination. Yeah. That the wall is, is on this side of the right or that side of the right or it straddles the right way. But the survey doesn't make the determination whether this is now, uh, it, go, it goes before the planning board. Well, if it's on private land, it doesn't. If it's on public land, it does. And if it's in between, it still goes to the planning board. Except what we experienced on the monument. Street. Yeah, but but this was outside of the, it was not. That's because they didn't have rules and regulations finalized. Yeah. Okay. Not rules. I they didn't have regulations finalized. So, but I think, that as I read those words, this the survey, you know, the surveyor, the, the surveyor, in his stamp plans, determines whether it's in or in or out or on. Yeah, I mean, it seems clear. That, that's the that's the best we can get. Yeah. Without having staff involved. So typically, I know it's not so long, but for the trees. Along public right of way, if there's any portion of the tree within the public right of way, it's a public shooting tree. Would that include roots or overhang? Any, any portion of the flare coming up above ground, above ground. Above ground, okay. <clears throat> so and as it continues to grow, it, go, it moves into the public Correct. land. That, right? that, that, yeah, that happens. I mean, yeah. there's trees that are clearly planted on private property that have very mature. Yeah. Now it's a public shooting tree and it triggers. So. I have two of them. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you do. <laughs> can, we get, can you help me? I, I'm a little lost about what we're trying to decide right now. It was just uh, making a determination about the um, who who determines if if a stone wall is in the public right away or not. Mm -hmm. So it's the surveyor. I mean, it's very. It seems clear to me from yeah. clear okay. to us. I think there's no there's no, I have no idea what other comment or change you could request yeah, okay. on so, this one. So I have one question on 1.4.5. Okay. And, you know, it gives, I think it is a fairly good job of describing ways in which it's, they, this is a no wall, meaning no significant gaps. Significant is a word that is determined in the eye of the beholder. Yep. And so I would hope that the planning board could get yeah. They modify that to make it more specific. They so went about this wording, I gonna, I don't know how many times left and, and right. Okay. And in one way, it's not specific. And the other way, it gives also enough flexibility. There were things about when the wall is kind of interrupted for, let's say, a signage or so. Yeah. And, and things like that. Um, just seeing how the dynamic was around it after our comment, the amount of energy they put in there, I have a hard time to see what pay. Other than us coming up with the exact wording we like to have. Sure. Them asking them to go back and come up with something else. I, mean, I, guess, go it's, somewhere. I, mean, to, I guess it's not really a problem because then instead of one stone wall, you have two stone walls. Because yeah. if there's a gap in there <laughs> yeah. somewhere, right? Yeah. And so maybe only part of it is going to be 
in town land. And as long as you have to per permit them separately. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Just make no, and, and again, yeah, this let's, would let's, be let's move on. Yeah, this, this would also be, to be clear, the planning board would wrestle with these things eventually. Yeah. And to Steve's point, our primary interest and focus for public works is our, you know, the domain of the, the, the right of way in work that we do. Mm -hmm. We're trying not to get trapped. Unfortunately, we know any project, including public works, will get trapped. And Steve looks at how will this affect what we want to do? I'm not quite sure. This level of interpretation is going to catch us. You know, it's been going back to we're going to have to work with them. Yeah, yeah we're probably not debating that particular, you know, what is significant. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and maybe over time they will have various decisions and they'll get clarification of what that means, but probably not for this committee uh, commission to okay. wrestle with. Retaining walls. T tell us about your concerns about retaining yeah. walls and where it is addressed or not addressed in the regu proposed regulations. So I wanted, when I wrote this last thing or general, I was taking a page out of Sven's book. <laughs> We're gonna give it to them. Um, I continue on my staff, engineer staff, they continue to have these concerns about retained walls, that there are a lot of stone walls that serve as retained walls and they're not doing the job properly. You can see signs of them starting to fail. And it, you know, you guarantee the it's not gonna get better. At some point in time, they're gonna fall. And when you have to put back the retaining wall, you have to put back something that will hold up. However, you go before a planning board and they're gonna tell you that it costs, doesn't matter. Whatever so it, in 1.4.2, that's where you'd like some language that would help you? Well, I was saying about, um, Looking at section 3.5 under exemption. Yes. Okay. And saying, look, uh, we can present and justify that a failing or failed retaining wall is a critical issue, it is an emergency. Exempt us, let's proceed with restoring the area, do whatever we need to take. Um, one example that we recall today was um, the Monument Street Sawmill Brook puppet failure. All right. It failed on the upstream side, I think you remember that. The downstream side was still intact. All right. But now that we were, we had brought in a structural engineer and we had designed it a repair. They told us that whatever existed in the downstream side did not pass the stability test. And that head wall, which is a retaining wall made up of historic stones, it's buried today. That went just prior to this law being enacted. It was in 2021. But, but we have we have two two angles here. One you pointed out. Uh, 251D public work exemption. That was one of the comments we had and they put in that we are able to do emergency work. So assuming it's not emergency work because we are just foreseeing something going, you also have 231 public safety where you can pull the thing it's in the interest of public safety that uh, the stone wall uh, it needs to have work mm -hmm. done or replaced. So we have two areas in this right. which we can pull in yeah. in situations like that. And it does it makes clear in a couple places and even in the last one, even though you're not talking about an emergency condition, but you're the town staff's authority to determine whether something is an emergency or will become a problem for public safety shall it cannot be annulled by this. By scenic bylaw, like you, you guys always have that authority. So the two point three will be applied after you have an application. Yeah, that's that's where we foresee some things. Right. We are expecting that stone wall or the 
to fail and so on. So we have to do something. So we have time versus two five one uh, D is emergency. You say it failed. Well, okay, right. You have to but act we, immediately. See, the trouble is two point three point one is a consideration of the decision. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And yeah. Yeah. Steve doesn't want to go through a decision. He wants an exemption. Yep. But the exemption we got for emergency. Right. Well, or unless or you could say rep it's got repair and maintenance in there too. Yeah. We so could say his, you know, it's a emergency work related to utilities, flooding, erosion, other critical conditions. You could say including any related work to you know functional retaining. Water yes. Or something, I, yes. You know something like that and would then, be helpful. And then yeah. it's clear. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because right so, now it's that's right. It's not the incentive for him is to wait until the wall collapses. Exactly. <laughs> and then it's an emergency. Yeah, well, that's it. And then it's an emergency. Yeah, but then it costs it's more. Too. Right. I mean, that's the problem. <laughs> So maybe if we could consider the including, so, you know, any related work, you know, associated with a functioning retaining wall. Okay. Yes, I think if and we could just put some put it out there, put that, put some suggest some extra work, right? Because that's what you're concerned about. That's that's what I'm hearing. So that's section two five two five one D. D. And then just, we have some additional wording. Just yeah. So well, you said some wording. What what oh, was okay. that? Or no, it's no, good. It, it's great. What did I say? Just including any related work associated with a functional, you know, functioning retaining wall. Related. Why would work. you say functional, Alan? Um, I guess by definition, retaining wall would have a function. Correct. Thank yeah. You. But I just I'm winging it here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Really I would weird. just leave it because yeah. then someone. What's the interpretation yeah. of functional? Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah, just yeah. say right. retaining wall. Period. Yeah. Correct. I like to add words. <laughs> it's a word of the day, huh? <laughs> okay. So that that's the end of the memo from yeah. Public Works. But were there other issues that you guys noticed uh, going through? Yes, it's, it's minor. Go to two point one, and uh, it says unless exempt pursuant to section three point five. There is no section 3.5. I think they mean 2.5. 2.5, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I am surprised that that has con that error has continued based on the I've seen it before. By, based on <laughs> oh, the number of uh, revisions this has had. We're all waiting for someone else to like clean oh, it okay. up. Okay. Right? So it, it, it was just administrative. You can see that I read minutes and, <laughs> and I look for where, where things go. And it's appreciated. Yeah. I didn't have anything else. Okay. If we talked about stonewall definition, location, and the retaining walls. Amazing how much time this thing took, how many people. Yeah. But I will say with your, your lead, I think it's better. Yeah. Well, just I just the first paragraph of the memorandum from Anderson Krieger. This memorandum this memorandum summarizes our analysis of the interplay between the proposed rules and regulations for the administration of the scenic bylaw, scenic roads bylaw, the public shade tree law, the Concord Scenic Roads bylaw, the Concord Private Digging Roads bylaw, the Concord Tree bylaw, the Concord Tree Preservation bylaw. The Concord Tree Preservation Bylaw Rules and Regulations and the Concord Roads Program Statement. I mean, we had a lot of protections to begin with. I just want to say this was a bureau bureaucratic regulation we didn't need and is not protecting anything more than what was protected before that I can see. Does anyone else see anything that this is protecting that it didn't wasn't protected before? I mean, I'm, it's an honest from, from question. From our perspective, no, but... Other towns do it, and Concord didn't do it. Now we've done it. Now we're in the club. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a lesson of good well. Redundancy, redundancy for the sake, regulation for the sake of safety is important, and redundancy can bolster that safety. But when it's done just strictly for bureaucratic reasons, it's a failure. It's a waste of time and money. Well, that's my I would, opinion. I it it bring. I don't think it's 
for redundancy, it brings another perspective to the table. Now, we may not agree with it. Mothers may not agree with it, but it does bring another perspective to the table. What is that perspective? <laughs> the historic, scenic, from another board's experience and view. From the planning board. Because it doesn't yeah, actually, historical commission. it doesn't actually go before the historic commission. No, at all. But from the planning board. Yeah. But the historic commission is the one that brought the yes. article. Someone's opinion of a historic value can vary based on the person or board's experience. Even if the definitions are very tight, there's still a matter of uh, interpretation to some of them. Does anyone have anything else they want to add to this? I, and I agree with you, your perspective, uh, but it, it's also a lesson. It, it's really an issue beyond the scope of this board. Um, the the it, the lesson in sort of layering rules into you know into an ecosystem of rules, and you know whether or not how much value it truly adds. I'm just wondering what the what the legal bill was for Anderson and Krieger to review this. You know, and the town is worried about costs. Um, anyways. And yet I don't see how we could have waded through this no, without them. No, no, because I'm not criticizing their their Yeah, plans. no, I, I I agree. I mean, I I heard that criticism like, well, this is gonna cost money, but it's better than having town staff have oh, yeah. to work it out. So it, it, it I is hope also it, a lesson in um warrants that can be brought. The changes in town bylaws that can be brought to the town and to the community without understanding the costs of implementing them. Exactly. Yeah, there was very little um, effort to understand the cost of this, in my opinion. Anyway, are we through? Are there more things here, or are we? So do we need a motion here? Or... Oh yes. So sure. just understanding too. Do, do you, are you you guys are meeting with planning board staff? Do you, you're going to go over this with them. Should we send a letter to the um, planning board? Yes, I think yeah. what we can do is summarize these themes, get some clarification, and make sure that from the commission's interest, these things are at least recognized. Now, maybe they would have been resolved or addressed because they're going to get council's memo. They're going to get something from their staff and it may be informed, it will be informed by this conversation because we're going to meet. Our interest is that they understand what your interests are, but we'll also capture those in writing so that they're submitted and they have them to reflect, make sure that we didn't miss anything. I think generally speaking, the, the memo Steve composed, what council has, we've got the rub points where we can make some specific recommendations now for this discussion. And, you know, this is not perfection. This is better than it was. It's hopefully saving some headaches between staff. I mean, that's really yeah. what the goal of this was in the end. Well, actually, the goal is the town gets what it needs and has, and staff is just, you know, we're hoping that the bureaucracy is also going to be in, to your benefit on the customer, and we're trying to, you know, avoid that as well. Okay. Is there anything I think, I think more? I, I see Sven is interested in a motion. <laughs> okay. I try I try to avert this here, but I want to have an emotion of things we, we discussed. So um I send Viva uh, hereby move to I thought we want to have a letter, no? Letter from the commission. Is there a motion here? Yeah. yeah. So already... I would move to authorize uh, the chair to prepare um, a letter to be issued to the planning board on behalf of the um, public serve commission um, with respect to uh, supporting town council's um, position um, on section two four two point four point six with respect to the um, order um, of the application process. Um, with respect to section 2.3.2 to add historic character and relevance of a stone wall to that section. 
this resection uh, 2.5.1D to add um, including work related to retaining walls to it and section 2.1 um, correct um, the reference to um, 3.5 to 2.5. Second. That was a very good question. <laughs> yeah. Can I comment? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sven, you read, huh. you yeah. um, brought up 2.46 as given the order, but it's not ready. Hmm? They just listed one, two, and three, but it. Yeah, we are saying in support of that order. But I don't think that's the order that we had decided on. But in fact, that order wasn't recommended. That's not an order. They just listed it, those in that order. Yeah, but we would support that order. Or we, is it not the order we want? No, the written permit from the Commission of the Public Works, that's the right of way permit. That comes last. That comes last. Yes. Okay. So which order do you want? So it'll be if you're looking at those three, it'll be in the order of what, what public, comes first. Um uh, it'll be two. the joint hearing, which is number two. Two. Right. And then the written approval from planning and the tree warden. Is three. That's it, number three there. And, and then, then one. Then one. Yeah. So I, I just am, amend my motion to say is in in support of town council. Um uh, comment on 2.4.6, we would recommend the order 231. 231, okay. I'll second the revised motion. <clears throat> okay, we'll do a roll call vote. So, uh, Jim Terry. Aye. Sven Weber. Aye. Dave DeLong. Aye. Jeff Bosser. Aye. Andrea Solomon. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. All right, now we get to go to director's report. <laughs> this is what we really were waiting for. The report. Whatever we summer. do, we only have 15 minutes for the director's report. But we want to hear all about the storm. Was, uh, Aaron, if you can stay up here with us, um, I'm going to go to uh, share screen. Thank you for wrestling through that. Well, it was fun. <laughs> Okay. Hey, there's so, snow. Let's see. And then there, there was snow. Now we are. <laughs> What's next? What's next? Exactly. We had every there's snow coming again. Now. All right, Aaron, are you good to go? Is your... I am. How long have you been up? <laughs> How long have I been up? Um, a long time. You can tell them what the crew schedule yeah, is. Yeah, so we yeah. came in yesterday morning. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah, so for this last event. Okay, well, we, we had another event. Yeah, yeah. which would be yeah, talking about. It. Yeah. yeah, so, so the, the event <clears throat> started. I don't think I have any photos from. Doesn't matter. They're just night. interested. So this, this, this last night's event, uh, event started at, uh, well, Chris came at 6.30, based on the forecast, provided a weather update to, uh, to, to start. Aaron, I'm going to just say start. They don't know the response we had started Saturday night. Oh, yeah. Okay. Start, a very, the, yeah, you know, our, our winter maintenance storm response started, and Aaron has been we were running on fumes with a lot of the other crew. It's kind of what we do. Uh, but, you know, the event, I would say, yeah, so, storm and snow. So we've, yeah. been, we've been planning for, you know, we had a discussion Friday uh, with, we had a kind of what we call a, um, a situational awareness report, something that, that um, we run. Uh, it's a it's a coordination meeting between all the different departments and uh, between the town, the schools, um, and the town manager's office, and we I provide a weather update, a forecast that I'm seeing, and then uh, the CPW's plan for response. Um, all the resources that we have available, what we anticipate uh, for a response plan, and kind of uh, communication, who's available, and um, uh, how to get information, and how we're going to share information. And then from there, other departments are able to provide input on you know what they're seeing and what their plans and preparations are. And, and uh, departments who provide customer service but not involved in the storm can can ask questions and ask for additional support from us to them for maybe recreation or library or school department things like that. So we have that communication ahead of every storm. Uh, we had the first event from this week. We started uh, crews reported in at 7 p.m. on Saturday night. Um, we worked uh, the overnight. We saw a, uh, a snow event 
um, heavy snow, uh, upwards of close to a foot of heavy wet snow throughout that event, uh, long duration uh, crews. We, we treated, we plowed, uh, continued to plow overnight. Um, forecast showed that the snow was going to diminish around 7 p.m. We kind of planned for that, uh, and it snow picked back up and didn't stop until about 11 p.m. on Sunday night. So we did a final scrape and push back, and what that is is pushing all the snow back to the curb line, clearing intersections, doing that final pass before uh, doing a treatment of the roads because uh, forecast temperatures were dipping back down to well below freezing in the in the 20s. Um, and crews, we dismissed crews between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. on Monday morning. Um, we ended up putting crews on kind of a, what we call a rest period. Um, a lot so Aaron, before that, yeah. we had our crews were fully available on campus and responding to the storm from Saturday at about 7, 7 p.m. Yep. and released Monday morning at 2 a.m. Oh, correct. That's that's a duration of that event. And if you all know, as you did your own personal, you know, maintenance around your homes, it just kept going and going. And, you know, when he went in to see the Patriots and came out, it was still yeah. snowing. Yeah. <laughs> so. And that was a full, a full, full, um, full deployment. You know, we had, um, Close to 50 pieces of equipment on the road. This is the first season where you've been fully staffed in public works. We've had a number of vacancies in the last few years. Fully staffed this year. Um, mm -hmm. Contractors in, able to provide prefer, uh, full service for the town. A great, you know, I got to commend the, a lot of the new employees for doing, you know, stepping up, getting it done on a long storm first one of the season. And the supervisors and the staff that are, you know, some of them are new in their roles and training some of the new employees. Um, they did a great job, great, great job in operation by all. Uh, it was a long one and, and everyone operated. Um, at the highest level, um, you know, so, so I commend them. Most recent storm, we had uh, a forecast for, with all this snow, uh, there's forecast for some heavy rains um, that was actually going to be starting out because of the temperatures as, as some snow potentially in the area, some flurries they called for, um, transition to heavy rains overnight and temperatures rising well above freezing and, you know, high mid fifties today. So the concern was, uh, and with also high winds, forecasted winds were in the up, uh, upper twenties and gusts in the upper forties sustained overnight. So we planned for that. Um, we had a coordination call yesterday at about three 30. Um, I ended up holding all, of, uh, highway and grounds crews, um, overnight and, and, between five and six, we ended up seeing a pretty good clip of the snow come down. And before, you know, within an hour, we had over an inch of snow on all the roadways. Mm -hmm. uh, so we ended up having to do a de-icing operation um, and responding to um, responding to that, uh, followed by, we saw heavy, heavy uh, freezing rain, then, then rain, very slushy, very hazardous conditions out. Um, some winds, all the snow load was still on the trees. So as that precipitation kind of continued to build, trees, limbs were failing, uh, responded to tree down calls and limb, uh, branch down calls overnight, uh, continuing to heavy precipitation. And with all that melting that happened, we saw widespread um, localized flooding in areas. So a lot of flooding in intersections, we saw surging from stormwater infrastructure. So manholes literally being kind of blown off of the of the, of the of the rim in different locations, widespread power just throughout town overnight. So kind of responding to those as needed. And this morning, as people started getting up, we found that their properties were flooded. Um, so we're well, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna weigh in because public works is, not just the maintenance of the right of way. We have you know water sewer operations who are also supporting these. Um, the power outages were affecting uh, the stations, so we we're having water supply stations um, getting knocked out of service. Uh, some problems with emergency generators required responses at two a.m. Mm -hmm. um, some stations going on off. Uh, so. Uh, a lot of activity going on, and those are sort of behind the scenes, but that's all kind of what is going on within public works. Um, so, you know, kind of setting the table last night was was an odd combination of response and yeah. quiet and response, yeah, yeah. but it was, you know, persistent. It, it was, and this morning we saw as people start to wake up, they see, you know, property damage, you know, not a mm -hmm. result of necessarily uh, public infrastructure, but, you know, their own, low, you know, flooding where they don't see flooding typically in this time of year and a lot of panic and a lot of phone calls and mm -hmm. a lot of response from not just public works, but police, fire, CMLP kind of ongoing throughout the day. Um, so providing, you know, trying to provide assistance and guidance where we couldn't provide assistance, right? Because um, there's, there's a limit of what we can and are allowed to do. So uh, it's been pretty busy uh, and, you know, wrapped, crews wrapped up. We're watching temperatures tonight. Roads are still wet and temperatures are going to be 33 degrees around 5 a.m. So <laughs> we're watching it closely. But yeah, that's that in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. uh, another good event. Um, Any a lot questions of, a lot of on that? I mean, this is, it's, it's, 
takes a huge effort. Uh, we are, again, not staffed 24-7, but when these events occur, we, we operate 24-7 for extended periods of time. And uh, it requires a lot of time, energy, resource management, very important. Uh, but any thoughts, questions, comments? Where, That's great. Where do, where do crews take a break when they need to take a break? <laughs> so uh, in the previous uh, previous commission meeting, I invited folks to tour the facility. So again, offer that up. Uh, wherever they can find a spot is the answer. So uh, typically in their vehicle. A cot on the floor, in the garage, in a conference room, uh, in their vehicle, in a work truck, in a garage, uh, in the sign room, in the parts room, uh, in the break room. So there's no like designated there place for them to take a break. No, it's and and it's and it's tough because it's like Alan said, we're twenty four seven. So as we try to rotate the room and get some people off the road, we'll, they might be trying to take a break while another truck is coming to the shop for repair, and now we're running tools and you know that yeah. that rest just turned into like <laughs> an immediate shot out of the bed because you hear like a you know a tool going off or the air compressor kicking on, and so it's not the best situation. So so the new facilities would help. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I would like to take I would like to take a tour. Actually, I don't know if anyone else is interested in tour that. Mid, but mid event, it's even more fun. I know. I thought it was pick showing. you up. Yeah, yeah. 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 Honestly, a tour of either during, during an event or or during a during a day. Okay. Very yeah. busy during the day. Be good. You get a good representation of about it during the day. So yeah. Well, if anyone else wants to join me, we can coordinate with Aaron and see that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to make a comment. Anything that we do operations at any of the commission, you guys volunteer, put your time and energy in. At your convenience, you know, we'll share, expose you to you know, anything and everything. Well, it's just, you know, that's what we do. And you guys help us, you know, kind of, you know, and, and we'll see things that we don't. So, you know, it's that invitation is, you know, stands for all of you. So, anyway. Let's go, uh, Aaron. If we can yeah. kind of we go up one move slide, along one, one slide. slide. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, I'll walk through the slides. So the new uh, fast chargers were installed at uh, at Rydell Park, and I was able to test them out over the weekend. It was great. Mm -hmm. um, I was there for about half an hour and got got a pretty good charge. Um, so it went from if I needed to fully charge on that vehicle, which is the Ford Lightning, from uh, about 20 hours to fully charge it if I was to deplete it to down to two hours, which is a huge in, in improvement, which mm -hmm. is great. So um, that kind of solves that issue that we've been running into. So I appreciate the support of getting those in. Uh, Jarrell Parking Lot, uh, that's a new uh, uh, facility for the town, still kind of put under construction, but the parking lot is substantial completion. So we plowed that to allow people to use that facility as they, as they like. Um, this is a photo right off of Ornac right here. There's a, um, they, a lot of folks were uh, sledding over the weekend uh, on the uh, golf course and they park on the side street. And this is actually a private tree that fell um, onto a, a participant's car uh, and damaged the car that we responded to. So it's not a public shade tree, it's a private tree, but a good representation of what can happen um, uh, uh, during a storm, we respond to that. We provide assistance, get the tree off the car since it fell into the right of way and get them on their way. These are some photos of some, uh, these are all cemetery related photos here. So some storm damage you can see. Um, these are a mix of, I included, I typically don't jump a month ahead, but these include some little photos from last month's storm, the December 18th, and then this past weekend as well. So this is last month. See large pine trees that have uprooted and fallen down and, and snapped. Um, just some damage there. We're working on replacing some spigots. Um, it sounds like a small thing, but it's a lot of spigots in the cemetery. Allow people to come and fill up water jugs to water any uh, plantings they have at, at any of the lots. So we're, we're working on installing a, a spigot with a, a larger handle that makes it easier for folks that have some trouble turning turning the spigots on. You have to close them off in the winter. We close it. And we drain the system. Yeah, okay, because they them. they freeze. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. yeah. Work closely with the water department on, yeah. on that. Um, and then at the bottom right, that, that was a, it's a nice landscape that was done. There was a old fence that was there. We actually removed the fence, cleaned it up, got some vines off of it. You know, nice little project that uh, those crews are working on. Uh, some during and after the storm. So after the storm, we wash all the sanders out. So on the on the left hand side, you can see in the top, there's a wash rack that we wash out all the sanders. So um, get all the sand and the de debris out of the sanders to prolong the life of the equipment. On the bottom is kind of the photo of some of the sanders kind of lined up early this morning. On the right hand side, two photos of our operation getting started on on Saturday night. It's kind of blurry photo top right, but that's a loader on the ramp loading up the salt trucks as they as they start to line up. 
in the bottom is, you know, mobilization as crews start to start, you know, uh, get their trucks started, warm up, do the inspections on the trucks, get everything on. Um, so the fleet support that we do, we, uh, uh, photo on the left is just an example. There was a, there's a motor vehicle accident where a wood chipper actually flipped on its side and he provided some support um, to, to get that off the truck, get it off the road, open up some traffic. Uh, Strawberry Hill Road, actually, um, last night. And you can kind of see the road conditions where the, where the uh, very icy and slushy after that snow accumulated. Um, and uh, photo on the right, it's one of our large sanders, actually up for replacement request in the capital plan. You can see some of the corrosion. Um, and it looks like a very small tube, and that's a coolant line. That coolant line cracked, very small component. It's cracked, but it take that truck completely out of service. So... Um, that's a part that we had to order. It's been ordered. That truck is, is hopefully going to be repaired here very soon and back on the road. Um, we have been asked uh, more recently than not to support other departments' fleet vehicles. So this is an example. This is actually the recreation department's van. They had parked at Hunt Jim parking lot. Um, and in a short period of one week, a squirrel made a nest under the oh, hood. Geez. And you can see, if you look closely, the wiring harnesses, oh, that, there's oh. wires that are chewed. The photo on the right, that is a, a stub of a harness with all the wires that have been chewed off. And so uh, our mechanics are going to tear this, this uh, apart and have to rewire, troubleshoot, and get this truck because it won't start uh, anymore. So we had it towed to our shop, and it's been, we've been working on it for about a week, and Jeez. we have some more work to do to get it running. Where was it parked? At the Hunt Gym parking lot. Okay. Don't during, uh, during the fall, when the squirrels were yeah, putting all their stuff away for the winter. Um, a couple different photos of just some road patching. Um, road repair work that was done recently. You can see some patchwork being done. Um, plate compactors there in the middle. Um, and on the roof, top left, there's a radar feedback sign. It's actually a combination of the school zone sign that was installed on the road. Those were received um, as a grant from MassDOT. Uh, signs were free, but we had a supply of the installation and the labor. So we worked closely with uh, Highway and Ground, CMLP, and the facilities group to get those installed and operational. There's two of those that they just went in. So that's all I have. Right. The bridge across Essabet River in West Concord. Yes. It has all sorts of holes in it already. Not all, you know. It, if you find a warm day, that would be. We are patching tomorrow on Main Street, so I'll make sure to add it on the list. <laughs> yeah, after the storms, it does become sort of the cleanup, which takes weeks because yeah. we then have to go and, do all the. And, and there's a giant one on Route Two, which is obviously not yeah. your responsibility, but right where the where the railroad tracks go over. That's right. <clears throat> You'll be finding potholes statewide. Yeah. Right yeah. Yeah. Right, thanks, Thank Eric. you. Thanks um, very much. Yeah. Let uh, <laughs> me get to rest <laughs> a bit. Uh, let's see. Is Jeff? Uh, Jeff had been out there. Yeah, Jeff uh, Morosky is available. Jeff, can you, you know, unmute yourself? Are you there? You try and uh, try unmuting. Uh, you're still muted. Are you sure he's there? Yeah, hold on one second. Uh, How about now? There we go. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I had to press and hold the space bar. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> So welcome. Uh, if you can just sort of go through the slides you got here. Uh, if you want me to take the lead, I don't know if you have, you know, if you can see what we got or not. I can see some of it, and I, I know my team had a hand in working together to to put the presentation together. Say what? I'll take the lead just to kind of move us along, if you don't mind. Okay. That's okay. All right. Excellent. Um, so. Uh, this, you know, kind of in the last uh, season, we've got water sewer crew spending a lot of time doing meter maintenance, repair, replacement activity uh, town wide. You see someone on the left, you know, sort of, you know, the access and locations of these meters are generally not the prime locations of most residents. And there's a lot of crawl spaces and basements and you know, sort of tough areas to have access to, but um, very important part of the operations. On the uh, right, you see crew responding to something we're really working on. Uh, people who, you know, add things to the their sewer system that shouldn't otherwise belong. Uh, the Lowell, uh, this uh, Laurel Street injector stage, just a small kind of sump, but it collects materials, debris, and these are pumps that you sort of operate and get, get bound up. And so, you know, these are sorts of routine work where depending on what people put down their, you know, toilets, 
it can really kind of wreak havoc as far as the operation and function. So what you have is the crews responding to, we have alarm systems, they'll go, they have to pull these pumps out, clean yeah. them, you know, untangle them, do all sorts of things. So it's um, sort of a chronic challenge. Uh, public education awareness helps. We're not alone, but the industry is often plagued with, you know, just materials, rags, you know, uh, elastics, things that can kind of get put in the system. And uh, you know, people, we just try to be mindful of, you know, you, you, you don't want to put that sort of debris into your, you know, your... Um, these, you know. I, I'm not understanding this. These are pump... These are so, so we have, uh, when the gravity system, for the most part, uh, has areas of lower areas that need to be lifted up, and so these are neighborhood pump in stations. In the sewer system? In the sewer okay. system. So you get a neighborhood that drains to one gotcha. common area, and it's pumped or lifted. Gotcha. It's got a lift station through a pump system. So um, we have, in part of these areas, we've had a program to upgrade and install emergency generators. Uh, we talked about the power outages that were occurring with the limbs and the weather. And uh, we have just upgraded two of our uh, neighborhood lift stations to have emergency generators. Oh. So, you know, that's a very positive thing when the power goes out. Previously, we'd have to roll a portable generator up, Jeez. connect it, start it up. And that all is time, energy. So now we'll know remotely that this should automatically switch over to the, the emergency generator and operators will see that that has occurred. So, you know, these are all the things during storms that yeah. we are thinking yeah. about and, you know, sort of focused on. So, um, let's see, I think, uh, next slide. Oh, we're going to go to engineering, but I'm going to slip ahead to this slide while Steve is coming up. Uh, part of engineering is the stormwater issue. We had a long conversation. We won't repeat that, but I, I do want to say that um, for... Uh, the water and wastewater side, it's important of outreach and, and what we do to influence. Our message on sort of the infrastructure needs is being heard. We had Congresswoman Trahan come to the town uh, just at the beginning of the week to meet with the town manager and select board. And they invited me along because of the real challenges we have with wastewater, drinking water, PFAS, and that sort of thing. And I was pleased to have, you know, five, 10 minutes to explain to the Congresswoman and her staff who were really sort of roll up the sleeves um, to explain the wastewater capacity constraints to the town of Concord, to say, you know, how, you know, to, you know, sort of accommodate affordable housing, economic growth development, MBTA zoning. You know, we have stresses and pressures that, you know, need to be supported with infrastructure. And I can say the Congresswoman is aware of these issues. We're not alone. But the fact that we got that kind of FaceTime with the Congresswoman, you know, in Concord, just, it does speak to the fact that our message is being heard and registered. And so, you know, that was a real positive, you know, and um, so so just worth sharing that. But um, Sven, if you want yeah, to- Yeah, to that, if, yeah. if I look at your written report about the, the capacity here- At the on, wastewater treatment plant. The, the period average flow compared to last year is significantly higher. Yes. And is there a specific reason why this is so, so much higher? Yes. Uh, the, the flow variability is driven by significantly, it's seasonal to some degree, but extreme storm events, especially flooding, will have you know significant impacts. And we've experienced a lot of flooding over the last couple months. And so as the uh, groundwater rises and even in the surface water, you know, the, last night, our um, pump station right here at Lowell Road, it went, went from somewhere in maybe 800 gallons per minute to over 1,500. Almost double the flow is now going through. And a lot of that, it's gonna take about 48 hours and it'll start, you know, tailing off but we have uh, experienced a concern, Sven, and you didn't do this, but I would say we were talking earlier about basements and flooding. Yeah. Regrettably, a lot of people don't pump realize that if they take a sump pump and they yeah. put it into their sanitary sewer, it's now adding to the flow that is very precious for the town and being treated as if it was wastewater at a treatment plant. And that's prohibited, but it's also part of the messaging as far as 
what can and should go into the sewer system. It's also extraneous flow. Some pumps should not be, they're prohibited from being connected, but we do see uh, an increase in flow that we also attribute to some degree to the, the, the illicit use of some pumps. And sometimes it's people don't understand, they move into a house, they don't even know the system's in place. So that's where you know, uh, education is important. We did a news and notice uh, spend for that very reason because we saw the flows increase. Yeah, I saw that dramatically, and that was what that was one of the responses that we had. So, what should they do? What um, uh, some pumps should be going out to the property, out you know, out um, onto the yard. Um, Steve, you know, we we talked about stormwater. Um, it's better to just displace it, and you'll see it temporarily. Hoses going out onto the yard and going out to waste. Sometimes they'll spill out into the right of way. That can become challenging this time of year um, where you can get freezing and then you end up having sort of responses. So it's a part of the stormwater management that we're really trying to get, you know, our, our arms around. But, you know, should be is not in the sanitary sewer right. and also not out into the public way when, you know. Uh, and, and there <clears throat> we have a provision for them to connect to this storm sewer system if there is one available but well, we have some controls because you don't want people say discharging pollutants and so on because you have the regulations to... there's also no sewer rate revenue for that inflow that's coming into the sewer system that's correct it's, it's so it's a cost but uh, our, our limit is the 12 months rolling average or 12 months rolling average of 1.2 million gallons a day Twelve month rolling, year. and we're getting yeah. close. And it again, this over. We've we've um the it, no, that's an the daily. I think yeah, I think but yeah, it's twelve months is one point well, one point yeah. But I, if you see that the daily goes up, that, that's right. The, that's right. Average up, and this is why we talk about the how precious the available capacity is, and the fact that we can even connect people is going to be dependent on maintaining our our permit, and if we exceed that. We end up in a consent order to do things, but also a potential moratorium on any additional connections. So that's why we had this conversation with Congresswoman Trahan, that we need support on the political side of things to help us with EPA and DEP, because a town like Concord is trying to do everything properly. We're not trying to hedge anything on environmental protection or affordable housing, um, MBTA zoning, but we also have permits that are you know, driven by regulators. And we've been really trying to work a way of how can we increase our capacity without having, you know, and maybe there could be a compromise to environmental protection, but it's a balance. You know, we can't just, you know, sort of box ourselves in so we don't have alternatives because the alternative is no additional growth or development. So just remind me the the Baker Street project. That yes, that's thing. 40B. At the 40B, is that on sewer or off sewer? That is proposed to be on sewer. It will take capacity. Yeah. 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 Okay, thanks for the question. Steve, um, we'll go up to kind of now uh, beyond. We've talked stormwater, I think, enough. Yeah. Uh, so we want right. to get to the. Okay, so this is just a caption of um, <clears throat> the survey results for the transportation study. A study that we kind of take over uh, to help out planning in the absence of their manager. Um, so uh, I hope you all had the opportunity to do the survey. There were 369 respondents um, in Stantec, the consultant has put a, a summary of the results, uh, which we have now shared with the Transmission Advisory Committee so they can review those results, along with the results of the public meeting that we had um, in November, right? I think it was. And, uh, so <clears throat> after after this, uh, these results are assessed and, and, the, and, the, and we figure out exactly what the public is asking for for improvements. Um, we will go back to the consultant and, and proceed with a study, maybe refine the scope of work that they're doing. Um, but we're still in input gathering mode. As you speak. Um, so this is a uh, we we are in winter mode for engineering where we try and put plans together and, and and projects and get bidding out you know in the winter and spring. Um, Baker, Cottage, Maine, and then you have Old Bridge and Crest come together here 
And um, there are some issues there with alignments. Our consultant, Jacobs Engineering, uh, has been working on this design. Uh, we're trying to realign intersections so that you know turning movements are, are better and smoother. A big um, change on this plan is the removal of the the uh, utility pole. Yeah, bridge, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, so that first, yeah, the pole is right here yeah. presently. Yeah. And, um, and then the realignment of the old bridge and main um, so to remove that big sweep and where Alan has that cursor there, uh, that area will be um, now be available for doing some landscaping. Mm -hmm. so, so we we hope we can get this project uh, final design and put into construction sometime this year. Um, budget is always an issue. Uh, so we're hopeful that the, the estimate comes in. Know and I'll note the 40B on yeah. off of Baker Ave. There's been a lot of interest in what's the traffic impact and what's going to do to both Route 2 and then as well as this intersection as well. So, you know, this reconfiguration is very important, but also in the context of that 40B, you know, this is on our radar. Um, so, you know, this, but you'll, you've heard, if you've, you're paying attention or you'll hear you know, this intersection is yes. very, you know, it's a yeah. choke point. Um, let me mention of <clears throat> we're trying to keep sidewalks free and clear so that you know uh, for the ease of movement of people, but also for maintaining them using the sidewalk snow plow. Right. And so trying to get all of these structures like the mast arms and so on off on off, off, off of the sidewalk, it means that we will have to put some of them within you know private property. So we're speaking to each other. To give us the the easements, um, some of them are more co cooperating than others. But we, we're working on that as well. Um, this is uh, we wanted to bring this to your attention. This is the Turning Middle Road, and which intersects with uh, Silver Hill Bond Road, and uh, the, this street itself has uh, some serious drainage problems um, that have contributed to the condition of the pavement. The pavement is pretty much shot and it's been on our paving list, but we, we have to put a project together to address mm -hmm. the drainage uh, utilities out there. We have an underground electric, mm -hmm. so CMLP utilities, as well as, a, as the water um, that we have um, scheduled for replacement as well. So we put in the, this project together. We, we hired a consultant uh, to help us um, you know, advances, which is appear to be uh, pretty complicated. Um, we looked at the history of this road when it was put in place, you know, decades and decades ago. Uh, it's something that the town probably shouldn't have uh, approved the, the way it was uh, designed and built. The, the brook actually ran where the road is today. <laughs> and uh, so it, it explains why all this water collects in that location. Um, just, just a point yeah. of what happened, uh, not this recent storm, but the one before, um, high, high levels, the, the dam well, wasn't working as a dam anymore because it equal, equalized levels. of the no island now. <laughs> yeah. All right, so. But there were, I saw there were, you, you do continue to do daily check-ins on the dam. We yeah, we monitor. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a, there's requirements as far as maintenance and that sort of thing that we'll follow, and then reports that are required for the state to sort of ensure that communities are are tracking any changes or any deficiencies. Um, and then you know what's important is this is also we've talked the Warner's Pond sort of environment. This is a key discussion point on does the dam continue to serve as a dam? Does it get removed and the ecosystem restored in a different way? And um, based on you know the last meeting, you know, Sven volunteered to participate in this task force. And you know, I guess they're they're formulating that as we speak, you know, yeah. literally. So um, and Sven, as we mentioned that uh, staff will be, you know, sort of, sh you know, shadowing that the entire project. So. But but for you, after the water recedes, you go there and check on the integrity of the dam. We will see, yeah, we will, yeah. We will see if there is any yeah. damage to the dam structure. Yeah. 
right, there we go. Yeah, Did if you... if if there's <laughs> damage or major work to be done, would be good to yes, know that is. when oh, I hey, participate yeah. in these. Four to six. I, did, I didn't realize it. Yeah. Four to six. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So uh, we'll be meeting uh, at this point. Uh, um, uh, Jim just volunteered Valentine's Day, uh, four to six. Oh, I'll uh, tell you what. I'm busy. I'm tied up that <laughs> We may uh, try to keep it abbreviated. We did have a, a nice meeting recently with our staff. Uh -huh. Just uh, this is the time where there's a lot of year end reports, the annual reports are due, budget uh, narratives are due. So we just took the opportunity to explain yeah. and share with our uh, all our operators, you know, so they can see what everybody's up to and sort of nice to just kind of share and have them sort of plugged in. We have a great crew, um, a lot of skill. And would it make sense that in one of these events, I don't know, the chair or someone else from yeah, the committee comes and at least thanks everyone for the work and so on, just, yeah. just to be there? No, that might be, yes. And this yeah. was... This was something we did. I've never done it before, but it just occurred to us as as all the senior managers are putting together their plans and summaries. It's a good opportunity to re reflect back and share that with the people who are doing the work. So, absolutely. Anyway, that was just there. We are. I think we're we're good. Do yeah. any other commissioners have comments about tonight's meeting or no? Any from the public? Uh, anyone on the view public yeah. that's good you're doing fine thanks much <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being here thanks public, <laughs> thanks, public. <laughs> um, okay so do i have a motion to adjourn i move that we adjourn second, I, second. we'll do roll call <laughs> aye Sven. aye david aye jeff aye andrea yes we i agree to adjourn <laughs>